plaintiff, James Simmons, says the defendant answered an ad to purchase his car. And initially, the defendant said he had a good job and excellent credit. But everything he said turned out to be a lie. James claims the defendant failed to pay off the vehicle, so he's suing. Defendant Jude Camelloni says when he purchased the car, James insisted it was in perfect condition. However, Jude learned that that was a lie when he found two repair bills in the trunk. Jude claims he had nothing but problems with the vehicle and therefore refuses to pay for it. Start with you. Your Honor, the first thing I'd like to say is uh, when this man opens his mouth, what you will hear sounds like a sincere, honest, uh, and respectable individual. And I assure you, he is anything but. He is 100% con. That's uh, completely untrue, hmm. Your Honor. Will he, he sound like a lawyer like you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. So mm -hmm. both of y'all lying. Nearly, <laughs> nearly, nearly every fact he told me about himself was uh, either was a lie. It was a lie. He told me he was he was he had a good job. He was employed. He told me that. Uh, Where do you know him from? Uh, uh, he responded to a Craigslist ad for uh, okay. to purchase a car. All uh, right. Uh, but virtually everything he said was untrue. He uh, he said that he had a good job. He said that he his wife was an attorney. He said he had excellent credit. Uh, all, all of that is true. That's all true, Your Honor. He, How do you know it's untrue? He 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 he's he's divorced. Uh, he told me that uh, he told me that he had uh, terrible credit and that he had no job and no formal income. Uh, he oh, told you that. He that gets, contradict. You just contradicted. Yeah. Uh, uh, at a much later you date, after I had sued, after I sued him, uh, he uh, he uh, after I had sued counselor, him. Counselor, if you can do a better job. <laughs> Yeah. I won't pretend to be a counselor at all. I'm okay. a lay person. I'm not Johnny Cochran. I won't pretend to be. Give me some Your background. Honor, in fact, uh, he is the one who uh, essentially has misrepresented himself a lot. He sold me an auto uh, for 7500 He said it was in perfect condition. He said I would love it. It's never been in an accident. I have evidence showing it was repaired the year before I bought it for almost 4700 and the year I bought it, another repair I'm going to allow him to proceed to with the uh, transaction um, because he's the uh, plaintiff and he's the one that must first give his case yes, sure. and try to prove that you owe. Uh, sir, what occurred here? What transactions occurred to make you believe he owes you $2,474? Your Honor, uh, we had agreed on a price of $7,500 for a car on October 15th, October 14th, rather. He wanted to, he asked if he, asked if he could pay in two payments, uh, which uh, I, I trusted him. I believe that he was the uh, honest family man. That so what did occur, was. sir? Um, well, uh, he, he gave me a check that bounced. Uh, he, uh, the agreement he, was 7,500. No, the check that he gave me was for $5,000. Let's start with the agreement, sir. <laughs> yes. He gave me a check for $5,000. I deposited, I deposited, I gave him the title. Was that the agreement? You give me 5,000 down? Uh, yep. And, and when is the other 2,500 to be paid? Within 60 days. I, there you go. 60 days. Did he pay 60 days later? No, he didn't. What happened 60 days later uh, when you came for your money? Well, he made up lots of excuses. He said that he said that he would pay, and he I have many uh, texts saying I will pay, I will pay, and just incessant lies. Uh, not true. When That's he, not true, Your Honor. When he said, and then finally, I'm like, okay, just pay something, or I'm going to sue. And he came up with uh, he came up with a payment for uh, twenty six dollars and fifty cents in money order, <laughs> and it it he he includes this. A uh, childishly written note that I, I would like to present to you. Plaintiff James Simmons sold the defendant a car, but the defendant claims he realized James had lied about the car being in perfect condition when he found two repair receipts in the trunk. Let me get the facts on on sale and payment completed first. Uh, I contacted him numerous times. His response was uh, beginning January 1st, 
I will pay uh, $2,500. When I pressed him to get a specific date, he said by January 20th. 20th. And he would pay all of it yes, by then? by January 20th. Yes, I have that. As and what happened then? Uh, he didn't. He avoided paying. Uh, he, uh, I, I mean, there's there's a lot to this. Like, when he, like, to, at first he gave me, just, just, just bear with me for a second. Bear with me, please. Uh, I, he, when, when we met, I asked him for a cashier's check or cash. He gave me a personal check and his, in, his address was scribbled off of it. He wrote in a different address than his actual address. And I can show it here. It, I'm not interested. And, and, he wrote in, <laughs> and he wrote in, he wrote in the wrong date, Your Honor. It was and postdated and he agreed. I'm I not did interested. Not, I did not do that. I'm not interested. Uh, when I cashed the check, it bounced the first time. I had to redeposit. How about the second time? Uh, it, 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 it went through the second uh, time, yeah, but, okay. but it took a lot of work to get oh. it through, to get it. <laughs> but you no. got it. Oh, yes, I did get it. All I right. Did. Now, January 20th, when he said he wouldn't give you the money, did he say why then? He said, uh, I'm not going to pay you because I think there's something. No, no, that's not true. He said he was going to pay me. <laughs> Sorry. So he said he was going to pay me, but he felt that something was undisclosed about the car, which is entirely bogus. He presented me with a, um, with a bill uh, and a repair that had been done on the car, which I did absolutely disclose to him. Uh, but it, the document that he presented was actually one that I gave to him. So it, it was it, the, opposite of, the opposite of non-disclosure is disclosure. I gave him that document sir, and he's presenting from it you. And, that, and he hasn't paid since? He has not paid. All right, sorry, let me hear from you. I had to find the repair bill in the car, buried in the trunk. One was for $4,700, mm -hmm. a second repair, which was done three months before mm -hmm. he sold the car, mm -hmm. was for 3800 Okay, talking... that sounds like a good thing. What did he do wrong other than repair the car before he gave it to you? He what did he do wrong? He, 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 put, he put $6,000 into Eight, the car before giving it to you. 8500 Ooh, he put 8500 <laughs> into the car. Yes, Your Honor. He sold, how, what year was the car? 2007. 2007. All right. I love you. Do you have any more cars for sale? <laughs> you'll, you'll put $8,500 into a 2007, that sounds like the best deal. It still what do has, you think went wrong? Well, it still has a lot of structural damage. Four days ago, I brought it to a mechanic, and there still needs to be almost $3,300 was that, in repairs done. It, it, so all related to the repairs that were not done correctly by the There you go. Let experts. me see it. Yes, sir. Passenger molding, trim panel. That's not structural. Molding, panel, side panel. This is cosmetic stuff. All right, why don't you think you should pay them? Be is there problems with it now? Oh, absolutely. And, there you, are a lot and of when did those problems begin? Uh, from the moment I started driving it. I so know. why did you take it? Why didn't you take it back then? Why are you just now complaining about it? I never discovered it immediately. I have you discovered just, it. You just in... said you did. You just oh. said you did. You said okay. immediately upon buying it, I discovered. Now you're changing your story. Judgment for the plaintiff. <laughs> <laughs>